Hello, and welcome to the third and final part of the 3D printing lithophane series for the Wayland Free Library. Uh, in this final section, I'll be going over how to create the lid of the lithophane lamp. Um, I have an example piece here. I can zoom in just to show what we're going to be making. Uh, so this is kind of the bottom of it that would fit on top. Um, as you can see, it's got a little you know, lip going around the edge to kind of prevent the lid from sliding back and forth. And I'll flip this over. And it's got the hole in the middle here, big enough for the hanging light socket to fit through. Uh, but then it has the inner rim to kind of, you know, stop the light socket from falling all the way through. Uh, so all that said, let's start making this thing. It can drag off that example piece, and we can start making it from scratch. So I'm going to drag out a regular old box, and I find a good thing that works is to just give uh, two millimeters of clearance on each side. Um, I find that gives it like a nice solid fit, you know, not too loose, not too tight. Um, so just look at the body of your lithophane lamp and just add, you know, add four to the dimensions. So I have 124 by 124. So I'm going to select this box, bring up the ruler, and just go 128 by 128. And I actually find uh, 20 millimeters for the Z height actually works very well. Uh, I wouldn't go much lower than that, and you are free to go higher than that. Um, it's really all, you know, going higher than 20 millimeters is just going to be a style choice, though. Uh, so I'm going to keep it at 20. And let's just get a better view of this thing, just a second. All right, so now we can focus on kind of carving out the rim. It's going to stop the lid from kind of sliding around. Uh, so what we want to do is we're actually going to kind of select our block lid. Um, we're going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to hit W on the keyboard to bring up the work plane. This little translucent plane I'm moving around. I'm going to place this right on top. Left click. And then I'm going to hit B on my keyboard to bring up one of the duplicates up on top of the other one. And then I'm going to hit W again. And just put the work plane in an empty space to kind of revert back to the default view. And this one on the top that we have selected, we can go ahead and change that to hole, because this is the object that's going to be uh, you know, carving out the inner space and making the rim. And then for this bottom piece, obviously we need it to be just a little bit bigger than the hole piece to create the rim. So select that, bring up the ruler, and I find just having a plain one millimeter thick rim works, so I'm just going to add two to these dimensions, and leave it at that. Um, obviously, if you want a thicker rim going around, you know, you can just keep adding, you know, you can add four to give a two millimeter, and so on and so forth. Um, but I'm going to dismiss the ruler. And then we're going to align these and just push the top piece down just a little bit and then group them. So let's make a selection box to select everything. Bring up the align tool. And we want things aligned on all the center axes. So the center one, that one, they should both gray out. 
and you can just left click an empty space to dismiss the align tool and select the whole object on top and then I'm gonna hold down control or com I think it's command if you're on Mac I'm gonna tap the down arrow on my keyboard twice bring back that selection box and group to carve out the space and create the rim. And you can make the rim a little more pronounced if you want. You know, you can just ungroup this and push the whole object uh, deeper in. Uh, just be aware that, you know, wherever your lithophane panel goes, one of those rims is going to come down on top of it. Uh, so if you have a lot of detail in the you know, top area of your the faint panel, you probably want to keep it at two, but if it's pretty empty and you like, you know, the pronounced kind of rim coming down, uh, feel free to punch this down more. And now we can move on to making the uh, hole for the light socket. I have an example piece right here that we'll be following. And this is basically, you know, two whole objects merged together. And they are entirely based on the hanging light socket that I showed in the uh, previous part, part two. Um, if you are using your own and you want to know, you know, how to measure it to make your own kind of uh, socket insert, uh, I'll go over that right now. So what you want to look at, as you might be looking at your hanging light socket right now, um, is what I'll call kind of the inner and outer diameter of the socket, as you can kind of, uh, hopefully this is clear, you can kind of see the red line I have going is roughly what you should measure for the inner diameter, and the blue line would be the outer diameter, uh, plus one or two millimeters, uh, you know, just to give the socket enough clearance to actually, you know, fit in without it being uh, way too tight. Um, <clears throat> and what that will eventually look like, so I'll go back to Tinkercad here, so you can kind of see on this object, the kind of shorter hole in the middle here is going to be your kind of inner diameter measurement. And the big ones surrounding it and a little above it is going to be your outer diameter measurement. All right, so now we can go ahead and create this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this just so I can get the measurements here. So I will make the inner diameter piece first, which I had measured at 33 and a half millimeters all around. So just bring up a cylinder, bring up the ruler, do 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 do, do 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 do, and we can make that a hole. Then we'll bring up our outer diameter measurements, which remember are, you know, plus one or two millimeters to get a good fit. So 39.25, go ahead and punch those in. And we should also have our, there we go, uh, outer diameter object just be significantly taller than the inner one, just so it's easier to keep track of. And before we align and group these, um, just be sure to push up your outer diameter whole object a little bit. So select it, hold down control or command, and hit the up arrow on your keyboard two or three times. And then we can bring out the selection box 
bring up the align tool and like we've been doing just make sure these are center aligned you can group it and then there is our insert for the lamp socket and we just need to merge it with our lid piece uh, so what I'm actually going to do is this double-sided arrow on the top here. No, not this one. Or this one, but this one. The one that rotates kind of up and down. I'm going to hold down, left-click on that, and flip this 180 degrees. Once I do that, I'm going to select the lid piece. You can do that with the no selection box or the shift key. Uh, just select both of them. Bring up the align tool, and you've probably guessed center align, uh, but we don't want to group yet. So dismiss the align tool. Get that piece out of the way. I'm going to select the kind of hole for the socket. Hold down control, and I'm going to tap the down arrow until this sinks in and we have just the inner diameter piece kind of poking out the top so not like that but like that not that but that and with that set up select them both group them and as you can see we now have our lithophane lamp lid with the rim It looks like I accidentally grouped it with another whole object there. There we go. Yep, and there is our insert for the lamp socket. All right, and so now I can kind of go over just uh, general 3D printing tips for these. Um, because so many parts of this are so kind of measurement sensitive. Um, it isn't a bad idea to kind of carve out the most important sections, um, print them and test them just to make sure they work. Um, so what I mean by that is, you know, if you're at all uncertain about the measurements for your lithophane panel insert, well, an easy thing to do, you know, after you made this is just duplicate the object, drag one off to the side, drag out a whole object, and then what you can do, stretch this across every part that isn't measurement sensitive, group it, and then you can just quickly print this piece, test the lithophane panel. You know, if it works, great, go ahead and print the big guy. If it doesn't, you know, make the adjustments, reprint, retest, and when you finally have it working, you can now make the adjustments for the big object, print the big object. And the same would apply for this piece, you know, if you're all, at all uncertain about, you know, your light socket measurements, just carve out that middle piece, print, test, you know, rinse, repeat as needed. And that pretty much covers uh, 3D printing lithophanes and designing a lithophane lamp. Uh, feel free to leave questions in the comments section. Um, I'll also leave a link to my contact info. Um, feel free to get in touch. You know, I have made and printed these objects before. If you have questions or, you know, struggling with a certain segment of your design. Uh, if you're curious what it really looks like up close in person too, um, I also have an example piece out at the circulation desk at the Wayland Library. Um, so that's pretty much it. Have a good one.
stay safe and happy printing.